How ironic is this? I was shooting the project in Dubai and suddenly I'm uh, shooting the talking head in a very depressive environment and when it's super cold. But hey, I just wanted to make things more dramatic, so you're welcome. So, a month ago I had an opportunity to shoot a commercial for Juin and they were about to release a new gimbal called the Crane M2S, which is like a little brother for the M3. It's just as powerful and it's just a little bit more portable, I would say. I decided to go to Dubai and shoot the commercial there because, I mean, it's sunny, it's warm, it looks looks insane over there. So that's why today I just want to talk about the biggest challenges I faced when filming this commercial. What do I like about the Crane M2S? What kind of a gimbal even is it? And would I use it for my own personal projects? So the reason why I was excited about filming this uh, commercial is because I truly believe what Julian is doing here is something innovative because uh, I used to use all of these big gimbals, right? But uh, then I got uh, a back injury and ever since then I've always wanted to find the smallest possible gimbal which still holds a lot of power so that's why I think they're going in this really cool direction where in just a couple of years I have a feeling that they're gonna make a very tiny gimbal which can just hold the Sony a7S III with a crazy amount of lenses and that's what I'm super looking forward to seeing a gimbal which can handle phones small mirrorless cameras such as an Alpha 6500 and bigger mirrorless cameras such as the Sony a7S III I'm sold! Let's talk about the biggest challenge I was faced with and that is the Dubai filming restriction. Dubai is awesome, everything looks insane, everything is colorful, it's, it looks awesome during the day, it looks awesome during the night. But the biggest problem is that everywhere you go you see security walking around and the moment you pull out your camera they will instantly be like, okay, okay, uh, listen, you cannot film here, no, impossible Habibi, impossible. So uh, what this means is basically that in most of the locations we went, we managed to capture like a couple of shots before we got kicked out which is quite sad because there were a lot of cool places especially near uh, Burj Khalifa but we were kicked out from there so we only managed to get like two or three shots which is a bummer but who knows maybe next time but hey we still managed to go to a lot of locations and managed to get a lot of cool shots so I'm happy with that the fact that the crane m2s is so tiny and portable I actually think it saved us many many times because you know it's a small it's a tiny gimbal and once you start moving around with it people don't really notice you whereas if I would be like with the uh, weeble 2 or something I would probably get kicked out out of all the places so that was really cool because sometimes I could just hide it behind my back or uh, carry it next to my hips and no one would notice it which was really really great because that's how we got a lot of sneaky shots and the fact that it has this uh, really cool quick release system was even better because we didn't need to rebalance it because with such, with such a tiny gimbal every single millimeter counts like you just you literally change the focal length by a millimeter and it's just not gonna be balanced so the quick release system saved us big time as well so uh, overall, I think uh, the M2S is a very innovative gimbal because it's just you can work really fast with it And that's what I like about it. So getting the images for the gimbal That was also a really big challenge because I could not find a photographer at first uh, But then I managed to find uh, this one guy who was also from Latvia uh, And he does amazing images and I hired him, you know, and he got me such cool images This is what I like about hiring uh, people who know their stuff is because you don't have to worry about them. I just really don't like uh, getting people on board who are, uh, well, who don't know what they're doing, especially when I'm filming serious projects. It's because I have to look out for them all the time and ask them if they got this, if they got that. This guy, I'm gonna tag his Instagram over here. He's just amazing. And he got, uh, <laughs> we actually talked about getting like 100 images, but in the end he delivered like 300 or 400, which is insane. What a guy, man, what a guy. Now, another thing I'm extremely happy about is finding the right actress for the job. That was one one of the most terrifying things for me because you know I had to find an actress and fly her out to Dubai because I mean going to Dubai and finding an actress there with all the filming restrictions oh man like because we didn't know if we we're gonna be filming for two three or maybe even five days because we didn't know how quickly we we're gonna get all the footage but in the end we got everything and it was super nice working with Annie I just love her energy I love her atmosphere I love her vibe she's just down for everything even though at the end of the day when we're tired when we're not motivated to do anything she just just pushes her absolute maximum out of her body. She does a lot of crazy stuff, splits everywhere, jumps a lot, smiles a lot. It's just what a wonderful person to work with and um, I will be definitely hiring her for more projects. 
But yeah, just overall, it was an amazing experience working with this team because everyone knew what they were doing, everyone was getting all the shots they needed to get and I just didn't have to worry about anything. This project was a little bit difficult for me because I was both an actor and a filmmaker, so switching the roles on the go isn't as easy as I thought it would be. I mean, I knew it's gonna be hard, but it was very, very difficult because uh, a lot of times uh, I was just thinking about getting the best shot and suddenly I'm like, oh no, wait, I need to be in the scene as well as an actor, so I just didn't know what I needed to do but uh, you know in the end it worked out so I'm extremely happy for that. Okay, honest thoughts about the Crane M2S. Now here's the thing, I am used to working with bigger gimbals which offer more stability. Obviously with such a tiny gimbal there are gonna be more shakes, uh, especially when you're gonna be running and doing a lot of drastic movement. As I said, in Dubai with all the filming restrictions it was very difficult to get the shots and having such a tiny gimbal which you can just put in your pocket basically allowed us to get a lot more shots than we normally would have. And that's really, really amazing. The quick release system is really, really cool because it just takes a couple of uh, seconds to set up. It's easy to take out the camera, you know, and just uh, mount your phone on it and get a couple of phone shots. And it's just amazing having a gimbal where you can use all of the systems possible, you know, just smartphones, GoPros, uh, small mirrorless cameras, bigger mirrorless cameras. It's just amazing. I, I love it. And the fact that it can hold my Sony a7S III with light primes is just, wow, insane. So whenever I'm going to be going to places where, well, you shouldn't really be filming and should you know be careful where you point your camera at I'm definitely gonna be bringing this gimbal because I mean I can be very sneaky with it and it works great like the built-in fill light uh, I'm not too crazy about it because I'm not a vlogger but uh, there were actually some situations where I was filming Annie and uh, she was in complete darkness so I just turned on the fill light and it actually looked pretty cool so I can see that in places where you don't have any lights if you just need that little extra boost of light this is a really cool feature actually uh, I didn't unfortunately test out the gels you know to go to get all those blue orange orange and teal looks but uh, maybe next time maybe next time but other than that like it has all the modes I need you know I'm not this kind of a guy who uses vortex modes all the time lock modes all the time like I usually set the gimbal to follow mode or POV mode and I just shoot 95% of all of my footage with those two modes but uh, it has all the modes you need so I'm extremely happy about that. One thing I really liked is that you can actually invert it and get really really low to the ground shots and uh, even though I wasn't using it a lot moments where I was using it it was really amazing especially with wide angle lenses that was really cool that was really cool. But yeah, overall, what a fantastic gimbal. I would say I don't really see a big difference between the M3 and M2S. Uh, I just know that the M3 looks more dope and it's better built. Uh, it just yeah, looks better, you know. Overall, pretty good gimbal. Will I be using it for professional projects? Probably no, because, you know, going on a set with such a tiny gimbal, it's not very professional and clients might look at you in, a, uh, in, a, in the wrong way. But uh, as I said, for projects where I need to be sneaky, where I need to be super fast, where I don't need to carry a lot of heavy equipment, this is going to be my go-to gimbal for sure. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this behind-the-scenes video. I know it's a little bit different, but I had a fun time making it. My name is Gundar Smagon. I'm one of the Julian YouTube hosts. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.